My husband and I have an awesome story to tell. Alan and I have been married for 18 years. He's truly the love of my life. We love to go for walks, and that's what we do. We, just, we established from early in our marriage was going and talking and just learning to communicate with each other, being bound together in the Spirit and in the Word, you know, speaking the same, being of the same judgment, and just expectation of the goodness of God. We have been partners and friends with Andrew for about four years, and we have been intently studying the Word. We have just been going over and over again, Christian survival, the teaching by Andrew. He has really spurred us on to know more about living uh, in the spirit realm more than the natural realm. We have intently been listening to Andrew, listening to the teachings, getting that revelation to become our revelation. John chapter 14, verse 1. Very first thing that Jesus told his disciples, he says, let not your heart be troubled. July 15th, 2009, we came home from work and we work a 10 hour shift and we work at Kenneth Copeland Ministries. And it was about 104 degree temperature out there in July here in Texas. And Alan had popped his head in the door over there and he said he was gonna go out and move some dirt and said he'd be fine. And I felt like the Holy Spirit really was prompting me to go outside. So I ran down the driveway to find Alan on the ground and he wasn't answering me. So when I looked into his face, I saw his eyes flittering. And so um, I yelled at him and I said, you are not gonna leave me. After that, she goes and calls 911. I hear the ambulances coming. Next thing I know, I'm down in the emergency room at the Stroke Center in Harris Methodist in Fort Worth. And uh, Dr. Shindori became our doctor at that time, looking over Ellen. And they then announced to me that he had had a major stroke. Stroke means loss of blood supply to the brain. I obtained MRI scan of the brain and MR angiogram of the brain. So MRI scan of the brain is something that shows the brain tissue. MR angiogram shows uh, the blood vessels in the brain. MR angiogram showed a blockage of a major blood vessel in the right side of the brain. The MRI scan of the brain showed a massive stroke in the right side of the brain, which controls the left side of the body. One third of his brain uh, had not received blood. So that area of the brain is permanently damaged. At that point, <clears throat> um, we were not very optimistic about the outcome. And I realized at that point, this was severe, but I was in such peace that it just never moved me. We received a call from Debbie Moore. She didn't sound frantic or anything, but she said, uh, Pastor Greg, I need you to come. Alan uh, looks like he's had a stroke. Alan and Debbie are just vital members of our church. Everyone loves Alan and Debbie, <laughs> everyone. So my wife and I got in the car and drove over there to the hospital. Debbie just said, listen, I want you guys to stand with me. I lost one husband to cancer. I'm not losing this one to a stroke. He's coming out of this. He's not gonna be, I'm not gonna have an invalid, handicapped husband. Well, Alan and Debbie both became prayer ministers about four years ago here at KCM. The day that Alan had his stroke, I got a call from Debbie. There was no fear in her voice at all. She was just angry, angry at the enemy for trying to take one that she loved. And she was very clear about that, that he was not going to get Alan. Debbie would uh, periodically, when thoughts would come to her mind, it was, it was kind of humorous because she would, she would just, no, she would just say no. She would hold her head when any bad thoughts would come and she'd say, no, no. My husband's not gonna be crippled and I'm not gonna be, uh, I'm not gonna be feeding him through a straw and I'm not gonna be, uh, we're not gonna do that. And she was just talking to her mind, basically telling her, mind, telling her mind, no, we're not gonna do that. That's not the way it's gonna be. And I just, with her, just quote the word, quote the word, we're not gonna believe that. She and Alan both were defaulting to the word. They didn't allow the circumstances to shape what, what they believed. There was a lot of 
reason in the natural to be concerned. They told me he was paralyzed on the left side. They told me that he could not swallow. They told me he could not speak. They were saying he's going to need a stomach tube to be fed the rest of his life. He was paralyzed on the left side. I'm not supposed to be able to use this left arm, this left leg. He heard my voice, but he didn't see me. He lost uh, one half of sight from one eye and one half from the other. And this is something that they said he would never recover from. When I realized that he wasn't, he, his peripheral vision was gone, you know, it just really never dawned on me that he would, it would stay permanent. I just opened my Bible and I said, God, I said, what is it that you, what is it that I need to know now? And he gave me Romans 8, 6. To be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. And he said, Debbie, he said, you can do this carnally and bring death, or you can do this spiritually and bring life. And I drew the line right there, and I thought to myself, I'm going to do this spiritually and bring life. And I realized that all that we had put in was now all coming to benefit. It was all coming to fruit, you know, that we had spent that time in Christian survival. We had spent that time in harnessing your emotions, and I was harnessing my emotions. I was completely under control, and that's what disturbed um, the doctors the most. They were not going to speak death over him because his life was in the balance, and I knew the truth, and the truth was going to set him free, and I knew it. I knew it would set complete, it would set everything free. All I had to do was stay with what I believed. I had, to, I had to stay with my report. And my report trumped over their report every time. She did not back down to the doctor's report. She heard those reports, but I, had, I heard one doctor say, ma'am, I don't think you're taking me seriously. She said, oh, I, knew, I realize the seriousness of it. He said, I've been doing this a long time. I've been doing it 30 years. Her answer was, Jesus has been healing longer. Mrs. Marwe, she, she didn't flinch and she, she she didn't seem to understand. She was putting into practice the, the teaching that we'd had about harnessing your emotions. And so because she wasn't moved emotionally, they said, this woman doesn't understand. And I said, yes, sir, I do. I said, I understand. I said, but by the stripes of Jesus, he's been healed and made whole. And he smiled at me and kind of gave me that little nod. And I said, you watch. On the third day, one of the nurses came into the room and she began to examine his eyes with a light. And she said, Mr. Moore, she said, follow my, follow the light that I have. So she started off where he could see it and every place she took that light, so in his eyes. They'd never seen anybody in the ICU gain their eyesight back that it lost it. We had a picture hanging up of him in his room and um, the day before he had the stroke, he had come out in a magazine. At KCM, we have the Believer's Voice of Victory magazine. And I have a copy of it here, which has a picture of Alan. And um, so I put that I put that picture up there, and every time he would wake up, I'd say to him, you look at that man, you look at how healthy he is, and that's exactly what you see. The next day, he was moving his leg, he was moving his arm. He grabbed my hand hard with his, with his left arm. It was a left hand, it was a miracle. Everything was starting to come back on him. From then on, you could just see the strength coming back. He was doing better and better and better. He started getting better and he, he was moving the left side you know, and speech was getting normal. I could even notice my own speech starting to clear up and then one day I just got up and was going to go use the bathroom and all the things that they'd hooked me up with just they were falling off me. And I walked into the room and there's three big nurses standing around Alan and they want to know how he got where he went. I said, I don't know how, I don't know how you do it, but I walk. <laughs> and they said, but Mr. Moore, you don't understand. You don't walk. And he said, I don't. And the ninth day, he went home basically uh, walking. When Alan got out of the hospital, he was out of the hospital in nine days, and right after they got home, Debbie called me, and she said, he's ready to come back to work. Now, Alan came back to work. We expected him to take it a little bit easy, but Alan doesn't take it easy when he's praying. He goes right after it. Alan is, he hasn't missed a day of work since. He's never taken it easy. He's going full bore. His prayers are strong. He's a strong man, and I know that his spirit is stronger than it ever was. When Ellen came home from the hospital, we had to actually find a primary doctor. And Dr. Jeff Allen 
was willing to become our primary care doctor. And Dr. Allen goes to the church that we go to at the river, and uh, he told us that he would gladly take Allen on. He came in to me to, to follow up, and just, uh, of course, if I if I had seen him, just seen him just on a routine, if he hadn't have told me he had had a stroke, I certainly would have never known he had had a stroke. He was amazed at Allen. He um, was amazed at that Alan could function the way he could function. I mean, Dr. Shindori had sent him all the reports and he had, um, you know, sent him the x-rays and everything. And uh, Dr. Alan was absolutely amazed. With major strokes like Alan had, when, when you've lost most of your mental cerebral artery, or most of your mental cerebral arteries been occluded, I've uh, never seen anyone re recover as well as, as Alan has. I've, most people are weak on on that on the affected side uh, and drag their foot or can't use their arm or are totally paralyzed even often they're totally paralyzed when they've had a stroke this significant I've never seen anything like this <laughs> in September he was doing fine he was basically totally independent and I could not believe that somebody could get that much of improvement that quickly with that big stroke. So I thought that may maybe he didn't have that much damage to the brain. Maybe the early on we saw this uh, big area, but maybe that was all, a lot of that was uh, swelling in the brain, not actual uh, destruction of the brain tissue. So I wanted to re repeat the MRI scan and MRI angiogram uh, to see. And then the MRI scan showed Basically, again, same thing, large area of uh, basically a scar formation. There is no viable brain tissue there uh, in the same area which we saw initially. There's been no change between the first and second MRI, but with the evidence that you have with Alan is that he's walking and talking just like a normal person who had never had a stroke. So basically he had a massive stroke with the complete uh, permanent damage to that area, but but he made a miraculous recovery, so I don't know, I, I can't explain that. We just walked out on that, hey, by his stripes we were healed, we just saw the progression, the power of God working in our lives. Dr. Shindori showed Alan the large, massive stroke that he had had, and he said to him, all I can say is that your head does not match your body. He says, I don't understand it. He says, I don't understand anything about this. He says, but your head does not match your body. I never saw anybody with that big stroke with also clear-cut blockage of the blood vessel going out of the hospital in nine days just walking. Um, never saw that in my 30 years, more than 30 years of uh, neurology practice. And so we just believe that First Peter 1.5 says that Alan's been kept by the power of God through faith. And uh, he walks around today perfectly normal. He works a 10-hour shift, four days a week. Thank you for calling Kenneth Cope Ministry Prayer Line. My name is Alan, who am I praying with? He's on the prayer line praying for people, speaking that word over them, giving them life. In Jesus' name, amen. He's completely healed and he's completely made whole. <laughs> there you go. Thank you. I'm going to work hard, I'm going to work strong, and I'm going to do it in, in the Lord's strength. And so. Praise God, we can see the results, we can see the victory, and so we'll continue to walk in that same way, knowing that God is a good God and His provision is abundant for every grace we need. Amen. Amen.